La Conciencia de la Mestiza, Towards a New Consciousness, written by Gloria Anzaldúa, read by Sen Naomi Kirschholz, July 11, 2022. Por la mujer de mi raza hablará el espíritu. José Vasco Celos, Mexican philosopher, envisaged una raza mestiza, una mezcla de razas afines, una raza de color, la primera raza síntesis del globo. He called it a cosmic race, la raza cósmica, a fifth race embracing the four major races of the world. Opposite to the theory of the pure Aryan and to the policy of racial purity that white America practices, his theory is one of inclusivity. At the confluence of two or more genetic streams with chromosomes constantly crossing over, this mixture of races rather than resulting in an inferior being provides hybrid progeny, a mutable, more malleable species with a rich gene pool. From this racial, ideological, cultural, and biological cross-pollinization, an quote-unquote alien consciousness is presently in the making. A new mestiza consciousness, una conciencia de la mujer, it is a consciousness of the borderlands. Una lucha de fronteras, a struggle of borders. Because I, a mestiza, continually walk out of one culture and into another. Because I am in all cultures at the same time. Alma entre dos mundos, tres, cuat, me zumba la cabeza con lo contradictorio. Estoy norteada por todas las voces me hablan simultaneamente. The ambivalence from the clash of voices results in mental and emotional states of perplexity. Internal strife results in insecurity and indecisiveness. The mestiza's dual or multiple personality is plagued by psychic restlessness. In a constant state of mental nepantilism, an Aztec word meaning torn between ways, la mestiza is a product of the transfer of the cultural and spiritual values of one group to another. Being tricultural, monolingual, bilingual, multilingual, speaking a patois, and in a state of perpetual transition, the mestiza faces the dilemma of the mixed breed. Which collectivity does the daughter of a dark-skinned mother listen to? El choque de un alma atrapado entre el mundo de espíritu y el mundo de la técnica a veces la deja entulada. Cradled in one culture, sandwiched between two cultures, straddling all three cultures and their value systems, La Mestiza undergoes a struggle of flesh, a struggle of borders, an inner war. Like all people, we perceive the version of reality that our culture communicates. Like others, having or living in more than one culture, we get multiple, often opposing messages. The coming together of two self-consistent but habitually incompatible frames of references causes un choc, a cultural collision. Within us, and within la cultura chicana, commonly held beliefs of the white culture attack commonly held beliefs of the Mexican culture, and both attack commonly held beliefs of the indigenous culture. Subconsciously, we see an attack on ourselves and our beliefs as a threat, and we attempt to block with a counter stance. But it is not enough to stand on the opposite river bank Shouting questions, challenging patriarchal white conventions, a counterstance locks one into a duel of oppressor and oppressed, locked in mortal combat like the cop and the criminal. Both are reduced to a common denominator of violence. The counterstance refutes the dominant culture's views and beliefs, and for this, it is proudly defiant. All reaction is limited by and dependent on what it is reacting against, because the counterstance stems from a problem with authority, outer as well as inner, it's a step towards liberation from cultural domination, but it is not a way of life. At some point on our way to a new consciousness, we will have to leave the opposite bank, the split between the two mortal combatants somehow healed, so that we are on both shores at once, and at once see through serpent and eagle eyes. Or perhaps we will decide to disengage from the dominant culture, write it off altogether, as a lost cause and cross the border into a wholly new and separate territory. Or we might go another route. The possibilities are numerous once we decide to act and not react. A tolerance for ambiguity. These numerous possibilities leave La Mestiza floundering in uncharted seas. In perceiving conflicting information and points of view, 
she is subjected to a swamping of her psychological borders. She has discovered that she can't hold concepts or ideas in rigid boundaries. The borders and walls that are supposed to keep the undesirable ideas out are entrenched habits and patterns of behavior. These habits and patterns are the enemy within. Rigidity means death. Only by remaining flexible is she able to stretch the psyche horizontally and vertically. La Mestiza constantly has to shift out of habitual formations, from convergent thinking, analytical reasoning that tends to use rationality to move toward a single goal, a Western mode, to divergent thinking, characterized by movement away from set patterns and goals and towards a more whole perspective, one that includes rather than excludes. The new Mestiza copes by developing a tolerance for contradictions, a tolerance for ambiguity. She learns to be an Indian in Mexican culture, to be a Mexican from an Anglo point of view. She learns to juggle cultures. She has a plural personality. She operates in a pluralistic mode. Nothing is thrust out. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Nothing rejected. Nothing abandoned. Not only does she sustain contradictions, she turns the ambivalence into something else. She can be jarred out of ambivalence by an intense and often painful emotional event, which inverts or resolves the ambivalence. I'm not sure exactly how. The work takes place underground, subconsciously. It is work that the soul performs. That focal point or fulcrum, that juncture where the mestiza stands, is where phenomena tend to collide. It is where the possibility of uniting all that is separate occurs. This assembly is not one where severed or separated pieces merely come together, nor is it a balancing of opposing powers. In attempting to work out a synthesis, the self has added a third element which is greater than the sum of its severed parts. That third element is a new consciousness, a mestiza consciousness, and though it is a source of intense pain, its energy comes from continual creative motion that keeps breaking down the unitary aspect of each new paradigm. En unas pocas centurias, the future will belong to the mestiza because the future depends on the breaking down of paradigms. It depends on the straddling of two or more cultures. By creating a new mythos, that is, a change in the way we perceive reality, the way we see ourselves, and the ways we behave, la mestiza creates a new consciousness. The work of mestiza consciousness is to break down the subject-object duality that keeps her a prisoner, and to show in the flesh and through the images in her work how duality is transcended. The answer to the problem between the white race and the colored, between males and females, lies in healing the split that originates in the very foundation of our lives, our culture, our languages, our thoughts. A massive uprooting of dualistic thinking in the individual and collective consciousness is the beginning of a long struggle, but one that could, in our best hopes, bring us to the end of rape, of violence, of war. La Encrucijada, the crossroads. <clears throat> a chicken is being sacrificed at a crossroads, a simple mound of earth, a mud shrine for Eshu, Yoruba god of indeterminacy, who blesses her choice of path. She begins her journey. Su cuerpo es una boca calle. La mestiza has gone from being the sacrificial goat to becoming the officiating priestess at the crossroads. As a mestiza, I have no country. My homeland cast me out, yet all countries are mine, because I am every woman's sister or potential lover. As a lesbian, I have no race. My own people disclaim me, but I am all races because there is the queer of me in all races. I am cultureless because as a feminist, I challenge the collective cultural, religious, male-derived beliefs of Indo-Hispanics and Anglos. Yet I am cultured because I am participating in the creation of yet another culture, a new story to explain the world and our participation in it, a new value system with images and symbols that connect us to each other and to the planet. Soy un amasamiento. I am an act of needing, of uniting and joining that not only has produced both, a creature of darkness and a creature of light, but also a creature that questions the definitions of light and dark and gives them new meanings. 
We are the people who leap in the dark. We are the people on the knees of the gods. In our very flesh, revolution and evolution works out the clash of cultures. It makes us crazy constantly. But if the center holds, we've made some kind of evolutionary step forward. Nuestra alma, el trabajo, the opus, the great alchemical work, spiritual mestizaje, and morphogenesis, an inevitable unfolding. We have become the quickening serpent movement. Indigenous like corn, like corn, the mestiza is a product of crossbreeding designed for preservation under a variety of conditions. Like an ear of corn, a female seed-bearing organ, the mestiza is tenacious, lightly wrapped in the husks of her culture. Like kernels, she clings to the cob with thick stalks and strong brace roots. She holds tight to the earth. She will survive the crossroads. Lavando y remojando el maíz en agua de cal, despojando el pelejo, moliendo, misteando, amasando, haciendo tortillas de masa. She steeps the corn in lime, it swells and softens. With stone roller on metate, she grinds the corn and then grinds again. She kneads and molds the dough, pats the round balls into tortillas. We are the porous rock in the stone metate, squatting on the ground. We are the rolling pin, el maíz y agua, la masa harina. Somos el amasijo, somos lo molido en el metate. We are the comal, sizzling hot, the hot tortilla, the hungry mouth. We are the coarse rock, we are the grinding motion, the mixed potion. Somos el molcajete, we are the pestle, the comino, ajo, pimienta. We are the chile colorado, the green shoot that cracks the rock. We will abide. El Camino de la Mestiza, the Mestiza Way. Caught between the sudden contradiction, the breath sucked in and the endless space, the brown woman stands still, looks at the sky. She decides to go down, digging her way along the roots of trees, sifting through the bones, she shakes them to see if there's any marrow in them. Then touching the dirt to her forehead, to her tongue, she takes a few bones, leaves the rest in their burial place. She goes through her backpack, keeps her journal and address book, throws away the Munibart metro maps. The coins are heavy, and they go next, and the greenbacks flutter through the air. She keeps her knife, can opener, and eyebrow pencil. She puts bones, pieces of bark, yerbas, or eagle feather, snake skin, tape recorder, the rattle and drum in her pack, and she sets out to become the complete Tolteca. Her first step is to take inventory. Despojando, desgranando, quitando paja. Just what did she inherit from her ancestors, this weight on her back, which is the baggage from the Indian mother, which the baggage from the Spanish father, which the baggage from the Anglo. Pero es difícil differentiating between lo heredado, lo adquirido, lo impuesto. She puts history through a sieve, winnows out the lies, looks at the forces that we as a race, as women, have been a part of. Luego bota lo que no vale, los desmientos, los desencuentos, el embrutecimiento. Aguarda el juicio, mondo y enraizado de la gente antigua. This step is a conscious rupture with all oppressive traditions of all cultures and religions. She communicates that rupture, documents the struggle. She reinterprets history, and using new symbols, she shapes new myths. She adopts new perspectives towards the dark-skinned women and queers. She strengthens her tolerance and intolerance for ambiguity. She is willing to share to make herself vulnerable to foreign ways of seeing and thinking. She surrenders all notions of safety, of the familiar. Deconstruct, construct. She becomes a Nahual, able to transform herself into a tree, a coyote, into another person. She learns to transform the small I into the total self. Se hace moldeadora 
de su alma, según la concepción que tiene de sí misma, así será. <coughs> Redo. Se hace moldeadora de su alma, según la concepción que tiene de sí misma, así será. Que no se nos olvide los hombres. Tú no sirves para nada. You're good for nothing. Eres pura vieja. You're nothing but a woman means you're defective. Its opposite is to be un macho. The modern meaning of the word machismo, as well as the concept, is actually an Anglo invention. For men, like my father, being macho meant being strong enough to protect and support my mother and us, yet being able to show love. Today's macho has doubts about his ability to feed and protect his family. His machismo is an adaptation to oppression and poverty and low self-esteem. It is the result of hierarchical male dominance. The Anglo, feeling inadequate and inferior and powerless, displaces or transfers these feelings to the Chicano by shaming him. In the gringo world, the Chicano suffers from excessive humility and self-effacement, shame of self and self-deprecation. Around Latinos, he suffers from a sense of language inadequacy and its accompanying discomfort. With Native Americans, he suffers from a racial amnesia which ignores our common blood, and from guilt because the Spanish part of him took their land and oppressed them. He has an excessive compensatory hubris when around Mexicans from the other side. It overlays a deep sense of racial shame. The loss of a sense of dignity and respect in the macho breeds a false machismo which leads him to put down women and even to brutalize them. Coexisting with his sexist behavior is a love for the mother which takes precedence over that of all others. Devoted son, macho pig. To wash down the shame of his acts, of his very being, and to handle the brute in the mirror, he takes to the bottle, the snort, the needle, the fist. Though we understand the root causes of male hatred and fear, and the subsequent wounding of women, we do not excuse, we do not condone, and we will no longer put up with it. From the men of our race we demand the admission, acknowledgement, disclosure, testimony that they wound us, violate us, are afraid of us and our power. We need them to say they will begin to eliminate their hurtful put-down ways. But more than the words, we demand acts. We say to them, we will develop equal power with you and those who have shamed us. It is imperative that Mestiza support each other in changing the sexist elements in the Mexican Indian culture. As long as woman is put down, the Indian and the black in all of us is put down. The struggle of the mestiza is above all a feminist one. As long as los hombres think they have to chingar mujeres and uh, each other to be men, as long as men are taught that they are superior and therefore culturally favored over la mujer, as long as to be a vieja is a thing of derision, there can be no real healing of our psyches. We're halfway there. We have such love of the mother, the good mother. The first step is to unlearn the puta virgin dichotomy and to see Quat la popeu, quat liqué, the mother, Guadalupe. Tenderness, a sign of vulnerability, is so feared that it is showered on women with verbal abuse and blows. Men, even more than women, are fettered to gender roles. Women, at least, have had the guts to break out of bondage. Only gay men have had the courage to expose themselves to the woman inside them and to challenge the current masculinity. I've encountered a few scattered and isolated, gentle, straight men, the beginnings of a new breed, but they are confused and entangled with sex behaviors that they have not been able to eradicate. We need a new masculinity, and the new man needs a movement. Lumping the males who deviate from the general norm with man, the oppressor, is a gross injustice. Asombra pensar que nos hemos Quedado en ese pozo oscuro donde el mundo encierra a las, las lesbianas. Asombra pensar que hemos como feministas y lesbianas cerrado nuestros corazones a los hombres, a nuestros hermanos los jotos, desheredados y marginales como nosotros. Being the supreme crossers of cultures, homosexuals have strong bonds with the queer white, black, Asian, Native American, Latino, and with the queer in Italy, Australia, and the rest of the planet. We come from all colors, all classes, all races, all time periods. Our role 
is to link people with each other. The blacks, with Jews, with Indians, with Asians, with whites, with extraterrestrials. It is to transfer ideas and information from one culture to another. Colored homosexuals have more knowledge of other cultures, have always been at the forefront, although sometimes in the closet. All liberation struggles in this country have suffered more injustices and have survived them despite all odds. Chicanos need to acknowledge the political and artistic contributions of their queer. People, listen to what your Joteria is saying. The mestizo and the queer exist at this time and point on the evolutionary continuum for a purpose. We are a blending that proves that all blood is intricately woven together and that we are spawned out of similar souls. Somos una gente. Hay tantísimas fronteras que dividen a la gente, pero por cada frontera existe también una puente. Quote from Gina Valdez. Divided loyalties. Many women and men of color do not want to have any dealings with white people. It takes too much time and energy to explain to the downwardly mobile white middle class woman that it's okay for us to want to own possessions, never having had any nice furniture on our dirt floors or luxuries like washing machines. Many feel that whites should help their own people rid themselves of race hatred and fear first. I, for one, choose to use some of my energy to serve as mediator. I think we need to allow whites to be our allies through our literature, Art, corridos, and folktales, we must share our history with them. So when they set up committees to help big mountain Navajos or the Chicano farm workers or los Nicaraguenses, they won't turn people away because of their racial fears and ignorances. They will come to see that they are not helping us, but following our lead. Individually, but also as a racial entity, we need to voice our needs. We need to say to white society, we need you to accept the fact that Chicanos are different to acknowledge your rejection and negation of us. We need you to own the fact that you looked upon us as less than human, that you stole our lands, our personhood, our self-respect. We need you to make public restitution, to say that, to compensate for your own sense of defectiveness, you strive for power over us. You erase our history and our experience because it makes you feel guilty. You would rather forget your brutish acts. To say you've split yourself from minority groups, that you disown us, that your dual consciousness splits off parts of yourself, transferring the negative parts onto us. Where there is persecution of minorities, there is shadow projection. Where there is violence and war, there is repression of shadow. To say that you are afraid of us, that to put distance between us, you wear the mask of contempt. Admit that Mexico is your double, that she exists in the shadow of this country, that we are irrevocably tied to her. Gringo, accept the doppelganger in your psyche. By talking back your collective shadow, the intercultural split will heal. Oh. By taking back your collective shadow, the intercultural split will heal. And finally, tell us what you need from us. By your true faces, we will know you. I am visible. See this Indian face, yet I am invisible. I both blind them with my beak nose and am their blind spot. But I exist. We exist. They'd like to think I have melted in the pot. But I haven't. We haven't. The dominant white culture is killing us slowly with its ignorance. By taking away our self-determination, it has made us weak and empty. As a people, we have resisted and we have taken expedient positions, but we have never been allowed to develop unencumbered. We have never been allowed to be fully ourselves. The whites in power want us people of color to barricade ourselves behind our separate tribal walls so they can pick us off one at a time with their hidden weapons, so they can whitewash and distort history. Ignorance splits people and creates prejudices. A misinformed people is a subjugated people. Before the Chicano and the undocumented worker and the Mexican from the other side can come together, before the Chicano can have unity with Native Americans and other groups, we need to know the history of their struggle and they need to know ours. Our mothers, our sisters and brothers, the guys who hang out on street corners, the children in the playgrounds, each of us must know our Indian lineage, 
our Afro Mesti Sahi, our history of resistance. To the immigrant Mexicano and the recent arrivals, we must teach our history. The 80 million Mexicanos and the Latinos from Central and South America must know of our struggles. Each one of us must know basic facts about Nicaragua, Chile, and the rest of Latin America. Latinoist, the Latinoist movement, Chicanos, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, and other Spanish-speaking people working together to combat racial discrimination in the marketplace, is good, but it's not enough. Other than a common culture, we will have nothing to hold us together. We need to meet on a broader communal ground. The struggle is inner. Chicano, Indio, American Indian, Mojado, Mexicano, Immigrant Latino, Anglo in power, working class Anglo, working class Anglo, Black, Asian, our psyches resemble the border towns and are populated by the same people. The struggle has always been inner and is played out in the outer terrains. Awareness of our situation must come before inner changes, which in turn come before changes in society. Nothing happens in the real quote-unquote world unless it first happens in the images in our heads. El Dia de la Chicana I will not be shamed again, nor will I shame myself. I am possessed by a vision that we Chicanas and Chicanos have taken back or uncovered our true faces, our dignity and self-respect. It's a validation vision. Seeing the Chicana anew in light of her history, I seek an exoneration, a seeing through the fictions of white supremacy, a seeing of ourselves in our true guises and not as the false racial personality that has been given to us and that we have given to ourselves. I seek our women's face, our true features, the positive and the negative seen clearly, free of the tainted biases of male dominance. I seek new images of identity, new beliefs about ourselves, our humanity, and worth no longer in question. Estamos viviendo en la noche de la raza, un tiempo cuando el trabajo se hace la qui a lo quieto en el, en el oscuro. Estamos viviendo en la noche de la raza, un tiempo cuando el trabajo se hace a lo quieto en el os oscuro. El día cuando aceptamos tal y como somos y para en dónde vamos y por qué, ese día será el día de la raza. Yo tengo el compromiso de expresar mi visión, mi sensibilidad, mi percepción de la revalidación de la gente mexicana, su mérito, estimación, honra, aprecio y validez. On December 2nd, when my son goes into my first house, I celebrate El Día de la Chicana y el Chicano. On that day, I clean my altars, light my Cuatla Lope, Cuatla Lope candle, burn sage and copal, take el baño para espantar basura, sweep my house. On that day, I bear my soul, make myself vulnerable to friends and family by expressing my feelings. On that day, I affirm who we are. On that day, I look inside our conflicts and our basic introverted racial temperament. I identify our needs, voice them. I acknowledge that the self and the race have been wounded. I recognize the need to take care of our personhood, of our racial self. On that day, I gather the splintered and disowned parts of la gente mexicana and hold them in my arms. Todas las partes de nosotros valen. On that day I say, yes, all you people wound us when you reject us. Rejection strips us of self-worth. Our vulnerability exposes us to shame. It is our innate identity you find wanting. We are ashamed that we need your good opinion, that we need your acceptance. We can no longer camouflage our needs, can no longer let defenses and fences sprout around us. We can no longer withdraw. To rage and look upon you with contempt is to rage and be contemptuous of ourselves. We can no longer blame you, nor disown the white parts, the male parts, the pathological parts, the queer parts, the vulnerable parts. Here, we are weaponless, with open arms, with only our magic. Let's try it our way. 
the mestiza way, the Chicana way, the woman way. On that day, I search for our essential dignity as a people, a people with a sense of purpose, to belong and contribute to something greater than our pueblo. On that day, I seek to recover and reshape my spiritual identity. Animate, raza a celebrar el Día de la Chicana. El Retorno. All movements are accomplished in six stages, and the seventh brings return. From the I Ching. I Ching. The I Ching. From the I Ching. Tanto tiempo sin verte casa mía, mi cuña mi hondo nindo de la huerta. From Soledad. I stand at the river, watch the curving, twisting serpent, a serpent nailed to the fence where the mouth of the Rio Grande empties into the gulf. I have come back. Tanto dolor mi costo. Tanto dolor mi costo el alejamiento. I shade my eyes and look up, the bone beak of a hawk slowly circling over me, checking me out as potential carrion. In its wake, a little bird flickering its wings, swimming sporadically like a fish. In the distance, the expressway and the slough of traffic, like an irritated sow. The sudden pull in my gut, la tierra, los aguaceros, my land, El viento soplando la arena, el lagartijo debajo de un nopalito. Me acuerdo como era antes, una región desértica de vastas llanuras, costeras de baja altura, de escasa eluvia, de chaparales formados por mezquites y huizaches. If I look real hard, I can almost see the Spanish fathers who are called the Cavalry of Christ, Enter this valley riding their burros. See the clash of cultures commence. Tierra Natal. This is home. The small towns in the valley, los pueblitos with chicken pens and goats picketed to mesquite shrubs. In Las Colonias, on the other side of the tracks, junk cars line the front yards of hot pink and lavender trimmed houses. Chicano architecture, we call it, self consciously. I have missed the TV shows where hoaxes speak in half and half and where awards are given in the category of Tex-Mex music. I have missed the Mexican cemeteries blooming with artificial flowers, the fields of aloe vera and red pepper, rows of sugar cane, of corn hanging on the stalks, the cloud of polvareda and dirt roads behind a speeding pickup truck. El sabor de tamales de reyes y venado. I have missed la yuega. La yegua colorada, gnawing the wooden gate of her stall. The smell of horse flesh from Carito's corrals. He hecho menos las noches calientes sin aire. aire. He hecho menos las noches calientes sin aire. Noches de linternas y lechuzas making holes in the night. I still feel the old despair when I look at the unpainted, dilapidated, scrap lumber houses consisting mostly of corrugated aluminum. Aluminum. Some of the poorest people in the U.S. live in the lower Rio Grande Valley, an arid and semi-arid land of irrigated farming, intense sunlight and heat, citrus groves next to chaparral and cactus. I walk through the elementary school I attended so long ago that remained segregated until recently. I remember how the white teachers used to punish us for being Mexican. How I love this tragic valley of South Texas, as Ricardo Sanchez calls it, this borderland between the Nueces and the Rio Grande. <clears throat> this land has survived possession and ill use by five countries. Spain, Mexico, the Republic of Texas, the U.S., the Confederacy, and the U.S. again. It has survived Anglo-Mexican blood feuds, lynchings, burnings, rapes, pillage. Today, I see the valley still struggling to survive. Whether it does or not, it will never be as I remembered it. The borderlands depression that was set off by the 1982 peso devaluation in Mexico 
resulted in the closure of hundreds of valley businesses. Many people lost their homes, cars, land. Prior to 1982, U.S. store owners thrived on retail sales to Mexicans who came across the border for groceries and clothes and appliances. And clothes and appliances. While goods on the U.S. side have become 10, 100,000 times more expensive for the Mexican buyers, goods on the Mexican size, goods on the Mexican side have become 10, 100,000 times cheaper for Americans. Because the valley is heavily dependent on agriculture and Mexican retail trade, it has the highest unemployment rates along the entire border region. It is the valley that has been hardest hit. It's been a bad year for corn, my brother Nune says. As he talks, I remember my father scanning the sky for a rain that would end the drought, looking up into the sky day after day while the corn withered on its stalk. My father has been dead for 29 years, having worked himself to death. The lifespan of a Mexican farm laborer is 50. He lived to be 38. It shocks me that I am older than he. I, too, search the sky for rain. Like the ancients, I worship the rain god and the Maiz goddess, but unlike my father, I have recovered their names. Now for rain, irrigation. One offers not a sacrifice of blood, but of money. Farming is in a bad way, my brother says. Two to three thousand small and big farmers went bank bankrupt in this country last year. Six years ago, the price of corn was eight dollars per hundred pounds, he goes on. This year, it is three ninety per hundred pounds. And I think to myself, after taking inflation into account, not planting anything puts you ahead. I walk out to the backyard, stare at Los Rosales de Mama. She wants me to help her prune the rose bushes, dig out the carpet grass that is choking them. Mama Grande Ramona también tenis Rosales. Denise Rosales. Here, every Mexican grows flowers. Every Mexican grows flowers. Mama Grande Ramona también tenis Rosales. Here, every Mexican grows flowers. If they don't have a piece of dirt, they use car tires, jars, cans, shoes boxes, shoe boxes. Roses are the Mexican's favorite flower, I think. How symbolic, thorns and all. Yes, the Chicano and Chicana have always taken care of growing things in the land. Again, I see the four of us kids getting off the school bus, changing into our work clothes, walking into the field with papi and mami, all six of us bending to the ground. Below our feet, under the earth, lie the watermelon seeds. We cover them with paper plates, putting teremotes on top of the plates, teremotes on top of the plates to keep them from being blown away by the wind. To keep the paper plates on top of the plates to keep them from being blown away by the wind. The paper plates keep the freeze away. Next day or the next, we remove the plates, bear the tiny green shoots to the elements. They survive and grow, and give fruit hundreds of times the size of seeds. We water them and hoe them. We harvest them. The vines dry, rot, are plowed under. Growth, death, decay, birth. The soil prepared again and again, impregnated, worked on. A constant changing of forms. Renacimientos de la tierra madre. This land was Mexican once, was Indian always, and is, and will be again. This has been La Conciencia de la Mestiza, Towards a New Consciousness, written by Gloria Anzaldúa, 2001, read by Sen Naomi Kirschultz, July 11, 2022. Thanks for reading along.